I'm here at Clayton Library and I've decided to sit Scotland's maths exam. This is National Level 5. It seems to be the 2018 paper. It's actually in two parts. The first part requires me to refrain from using a calculator. There are 50 marks and I've got just over one hour to do it. Let's go. Now they've been very kind. They've actually given me a whole list of formulae here. So even though I haven't studied at all for this, I should just be able to follow those formulae and hopefully get everything right. Let's see how we go. Four names. Evaluate two and a third plus four fifths. Sure. First question is a really easy warm up, I hope. Um, let's do the second one. Expand and simplify this set of brackets. Here we go. There we go. Really no major issues so far. Let's try the next one. Solve algebraically the system of equations x and y, simultaneous equation. This is great because we do these all the time in chemistry. We try to eliminate the uh, number of electrons from half equations when you got from a pair of half equations, so you can make an overall redox equation. This should be fine. There we go. I've got x and I've got y. Just to make sure that they're actually true, let's check them. Looks pretty straightforward to me. Next. So I'm looking for two numbers that uh, add up to 11, multiply together to 24, that's 8 and 3, obviously. Um, now clearly they're both negative. Easy. Part of the graph, this is shown in the diagram, state the values of a and b, well, cosine goes from minus 1 to 1, it's times by a, a is 5, obviously. b um, is clearly 1. No, wait, sorry. It's supposed to do that over a um, 360 degree uh, time frame. It's doing it over 90, so therefore B is 4. Easy. 14 and 20, they're going to ask for the gradient, right? Find the equation on the lines of P and D. Oh, this is easy. Give the equation in its simplest form. Sure. P is 3 on 2, D plus 2. Still very easy. All right. Calculate the cost of a journey in 5 miles. Uh, Five miles, all right. Well, P equals three on two, D plus two. 7.5 plus two is equal to 9.5 pounds. Triangle adds up to 180. Square adds up to 360. I've already got the pattern here. Pentagon must add up to 540. The angle equals N minus two times 180. Therefore, decagon angle, interior angle, is equal to 8 times 180. Yeah, that's 1,800 minus um, 360, which is uh, uh, 4, 4. There we go, 1440. L, J, K must equal 180. Minus 17, minus 36, 135 degrees. Looks about right. I just realized I don't even need trigonometry to solve this trigonometry question because they've given me a three, four, five triangle. The answer is six. I've got to show the points of intersection with the X axis and the Y axis and the coordinates of the turning point. Easy, let's do it. For this one here, I had to sketch it and label the intersections with the X and Y axes, which were easy. Then I had to label the uh, coordinates of the turning point. Now, I could have double differentiated this, but I couldn't be bothered. It just felt like it was going to be an integer, and it just felt like it was going to be X's plus 1. So that's what I wrote. Square base pyramid is shown in the diagram below. Calculate the height of the pyramid. Sure, there's a formula for that. Volume of a pyramid. I've just got to evaluate this expression now by hand. Um, slightly annoying, but never mind. 1, 3, 8. I'm going to divide that by 2 first of all. So that's going to give me what? Uh, nearly 70. 69 times 3. That's looking easy now over 18. 11 and a half. Done. Express sine x cos x tan x in its simplest form. Multiply them together. Does anything cancel out? That cancels out with that. So now I've just got op over hop times um, op over hop. Oh, cool. Sine squared x. I'm going to go with that. 
That's a nice question. Hope I'm right. That's neat. Well, that was the end of paper one where I can't use a calculator. And now paper two, I am allowed to use a calculator and it goes on for two hours, supposedly. I'm hoping to be much, much quicker than that. Here we go. Name. Farmer's market took place one weekend. Storeholders asked to record the number of customers who visited their store. Number of customers who went to the store uh, were these. Calculate the mean and standard deviation. I've got the formula in the formula book. I found a button that said calc, and it's just giving me the answers. Here we go. So the mean is 108, and the standard deviation is equal to 47. Um, seems a little large to me. Seems very large to me. Seven data points. Are you sure? There's a zero hiding in there. Data. Get rid of that zero. Press the calc button. There are my answers. Not 108. It's 126. And SX now is much better. 4.0497. Uh, I don't know if they care about rounding or not, but there we go. That'll do. Next. I'm quite pleased here to have found a significant figures question. They just want the volume of this sphere, which has a diameter of 6.4. So, and they've given me the formula to find out the volume of a sphere. This is incredibly generous of them. 4.4 4 divided by 3 times pi times bracket 3.2 uh, power of 3 bracket. There you go. There's some nice questions here. This one is calculate the volume of the Earth. Given the volume of Venus, it simply says this is 85% the volume of the Earth. So you get the volume of the uh, get the volume of Venus. So I've just had both those math papers marked, and I've achieved an A in both the Tech Free and the Tech Active, but I'm not satisfied with my percentage score. It was an A, but I've made some really dumb mistakes. I just want to show you what they are. First one here. Look at that. Minus three x plus x is actually minus two x, not minus four x. So I lost a mark there. This page was okay. There, I, I gave two roots here, which were real roots, but in fact, um, there were no roots for that quadrat. This one here, another just simple arithmetic error. Look at that, 180 minus 17 minus 36 is not 135. It felt wrong when I was doing it. But uh, yeah, it's 127. So I lost a mark there. This one, I, I went ahead and I think you saw me go, look, this is a three, four, five triangle. Well, actually, no, there are two possibilities just because that's a multiple of four and five doesn't mean that that's three. That's actually 12. And you'd know that if I'd have continued this method here with the cosine rule, I would have actually have known that was uh, 12. So I lost three marks there, as you can see, that's terrible. This one here, a rearranging error. Look at that, that's correct to there. So I get one mark, but then the next step, when you put the G over that side, the G should of course become in the denominator. And I did lose a mark here because I didn't read the question. It asked for the major arc. I gave the minor arc. Not happy face. These were fine. Lots of plugging numbers into calculators. This one here. Again, another arithmetic error. Look at that. The correct answer is in the box right there. Negative W12 plus U is not that. It's just a rearrangement error. Lost a mark there. So yeah, that first paper, I got an A, but it wasn't a very good A. The Tech Active paper, I got a very high A, which I'm much happier with. Most interesting lesson learned here is that the system where I grew up, the A-level system and the SQA as well, awards grades up to A, but not beyond. I mean, there's an A star now in A-level, but still, you're not rewarded for perfection. You're just rewarded for being very good, which means even the greatest students can afford to make mistakes. And that's the system where I grew up. So once each of your subjects is over the A threshold, or A star as it is now, you don't have to improve it any further. There's actually no reward for doing so. In that case, you should actually go to your weakest subject and work on that in the UK. Now the VCE is a bit different because you, you can sort of demote your fifth and sixth subjects down to 10%. Um, so the VCE point structure encourages students firstly to strive for perfection, to focus on your strongest subjects, and to focus less on your weakest subjects because they'll only count for 10%. So it's a very interesting um, difference in mindset that VCE students will be aiming for perfection if they can reach it. Uh, whereas in A-level, you're aiming for, you know, why would you get more than 90%? Uh, and I think that's, that's been a very eye-opening experience for me to do this exam because um, 
I only did get 90%. And the, the mistakes that I made were silly little mistakes that would not fly in VCE. So now I'm looking forward to doing the VCE paper and I'm gonna have to be very, very careful.